concept or meme of hell has been around for many thousands of years. It has prevailed and evolved precisely because it is successful in convincing people that believing in a particular deity is within their best interests. Religions depend on three major concepts to survive. The stick is of course hell, which appears in a variety of forms in almost all major religions today. Certainly the two most successful monotheistic religions, Christianity and Islam, have hell as a central core dogma. The carrot represents a joyful eternity spent in fellowship with God or perhaps a heavenly harem. The short circuit is tougher to explain. In principle, it refers to a complex of interlocking ideas that prevent religious people from subjecting their religious beliefs to the same ruthless scrutiny they use when buying a house, or a car, or indeed undertaking any major life decision. More than 99% of people simply inherit their parents' religion, or occasionally a variation on the theme, but they rarely subject it to any substantial scrutiny. Platitudes like, have faith, and trust in God are the coin of this mystical realm and serve to further insulate the core of religious absurdity from no holds barred analysis. Let's look a little more closely at the stick. Hell is unmistakably a central dogma of Christianity and Islam. And it's worked brilliantly in the past at hurting the ignorant the enslaved and the desperate, but it is a serious liability in the developed and information-saturated 21st century. For example, the Norse hell is cold and the Middle Eastern hell is hot. Very obviously, these are culturally based myths. We can also clearly see that as a punishment, it's totally disproportionate to the crime and utterly at odds with meaningful progressive justice systems. Well, hang on. Hang on, hell may be pretty extreme, but you got the option, right? God gave people free will to choose, right? Wrong. In the first instance, how do people decide which religion or subdivision of a given religion is the right one? Remember, good intentions are not sufficient here. Worshipping Allah instead of Jesus is a deal breaker. A lifetime of study would not suffice to examine every single subset of the world's major religions which is why most people simply opt for what's local and convenient, and childhood indoctrination further reinforces those cultural norms. Thus, an eternity in hell could simply be an accident of geography. Bummer. But that is just the tip of the iceberg. God is all-knowing, all-loving, and all-powerful. God creates each person knowing our every weakness and our every choice in advance, knowing with certainty that the fate of of tens of billions will be hell. But he loves us. There are a range of reactions that people have when faced with this kind of contradiction. It's a mystery. It's free will. I've just got to trust and have faith. I must submit to the Lord. These concepts or some variant are almost certainly what you are thinking right now. This is the short circuit in action. Take a moment to examine this insidious attack on your reason. As your rational mind begins to gain purchase on the absurdity of an all-knowing, all-loving, all-powerful God creating conscious beings doomed to an eternity of torment from the first second of their existence, from before their creation, an avalanche of such platitudes will assail you. They are just words, religious conditioning. Ignore them and let the thought process play out to completion. So where were we? Ah yes, he loves us. What's wrong with this picture? If God knew that Adam would sin, that creation would fall, knew with certainty that the fate of tens of billions would be an eternity in hell, why proceed? Would you? Would you bring a child into the world knowing with complete certainty that its fate would be eternal torment? If this is about what God wants, he's a monstrous tyrant. If this is about making humans happy, he's doing a really shit job. Either way, one is left worshipping a monster or an incompetent. Hell simply undercuts the concept of an all-loving, all-powerful, all-knowing God.
A clear thinking person, once they begin to consider the problem, can immediately see that we have an irresolvable contradiction here. If God is all-knowing and all-powerful, and yet creates beings simply to roast them in hell, he cannot be good. If God is all-knowing, but not all-powerful, why call him God? Religions have spent 6,000 years trying to reconcile these and other contradictions, and they have failed spectacularly and completely. I personally guarantee that your priest, rabbi, or imam will have nothing satisfactory to offer by way of resolution to this problem. There is absolutely no reason to expect that performance to improve. So what now? We each have to find our own way, to take responsibility for our choices, to embrace the freedom, if you can stand it, of being completely in charge of your life. Embrace the reality that this is it, that you and every human that has ever lived are uniquely fortunate and privileged to get this one-shot deal, a brief lightning flash of consciousness. Don't waste it.